Okay, uh, good evening. So tonight we have a uh, bumper-packed evening. The Halacha uh, is entitled Dating and Engaged Couples Sending Mishlach Monas to Each Other. Um, this I came across from a, the a shir that I heard from Arya Leibowitz, who's a, a prolific Marbitz Torah in America. I don't know if you've heard of him. And uh, he has thousands, literally, of shiurim. And I stumbled across this one. I thought it would be a very interesting topic to talk about. Uh, it's not so well known. You know, what's the problem? couple who are engaged, they want to send shlachmonas to each other, what exactly is the problem? So if you take a look, um, we'll try and whip through the sheet uh, quickly, I know there's a lot of stuff on this, but we'll try and do it as quick as we can, given that uh, the full program this evening. Uh, if you're listening online, please email me at j.golker at gmail.com, I'll send you the handout. The, the, the Shulchan Aruch says, the Machaba says in Tofri Sadi Hay, which is the very end of our Chaim in Hilchus Purim, Chayev lishlech l'chaveir shtei monos, a person is obligated to send Shlachmonas, but two portions, baso, I shall mine eichlim, or other types of food. And by the way, it's a myth, it's got to be different brachas. That is not true. It can be a, a piece of meat and a piece of fish, you know, whatever it is. Or mishlach, because how do I know that? Shnema mishlach monas ish l'riehu. Shte monas li ish echot. Yeah, this in the plural. Mishlach monas and then ish l'riehu. So two, two pieces of food, two items of food uh, to one person. That is the basic obligation. Of course, the, the, the post can say that it's preferable to be marbe on matonas levyonim more than shlach monas. But uh, certainly, if you're marbe on all of it, then that's, uh, that's great. If he hasn't got, then you switch, right? So the yeshiva bachrim, who for some reason they can't or they don't, or then you know they get a plate of food for supper, they can exchange with each other or things like that. They're machlif. Now, the Ramah then adds, You send it at day and not at night. And I'll tell you why that's, uh, that's often relevant. People sometimes slip up on this. But I remember one year, you know, you try and beat the Purim rush. And, um, we, you know, some, we, we, you can get, you, people send, they can do a three o'clock round. They can do it in 20 minutes, you know, 10 shlachmonas, 15 shlachmonas will take three hours in the day. So you wake up in the morning and you get a little breakfast uh, delivery shlachmonas, which is very cute and it's very nice, but you haven't fulfilled the mitzvah because you've got to do it at daytime. I, presumably the people who sent would uh, you know, keep at least one for the day. They send one you know, halacha, but you can't send in the night. You've got to start from the day, which is alay sashacha. Um, okay. So, Now, so a woman is obligated, like a man, in these mitzvahs, the, you know, the mitzvahs of Matanas Levyonim and Shlach Monas, Ke'ish, just like a man. Here comes the point. But a woman should send to a woman, and a man should send to a man. Why? Now listen to this reason. That a man shouldn't send to a widow or to any unmarried uh, single lady. Because it might be treated as, as Kesef Kiddushin. We're not worried about that. Now, let's take a look at the Mishnah Bura just for a bit more detail. The woman is obligated in the midst of Purim like a man because they were also involved in the miracles of the day. And she has got to rejoice and to help to gladden the hearts of others. And women were also included in that. That I haven't seen uh, that a woman sends her own one, the husband sends, and then the wife sends separately. I haven't seen that, says the Morgan of Ram. However, Mikol Mokum says, Mishabur, Yesh Lahachmin. I've got a note at the bottom from the Halich Shlema, from Shlema Zaman Arbach. He says, Kivan Shor Isha Chayevis commits us to Purim Kish. Tov Shema Habal Ishta, a man should say to his wife, Vachain Lebita, or to a daughter, Shegir Lechinuch, who's of Chinuch age. Uh, who's reliant on the father for, for her sustenance. So either they just make it very clear that the husband is sort of acting on behalf of, of, of the wife and of adult or chinuch aged girls. And, uh, and that's generally what happens. And you send a little bit more than just two basic items. And generally that's what we do. We send larger shlachmonas and... Um, 
and therefore the, the, the wives and the daughters would be included in that. Of course, if, the, if, if they want to send their own ones, then they are able to do so. Um, you know, that, that's not a problem. Now, Safek Kiddushin says the Mishnah Burin Sifkot and Chavvav in the second box, fourth line, Sheyemru Shezehu Savloin is Sheacha HaKiddushin. Because, what's Pshat Safek Kiddushin? Because people will say, Shezehu Sivloin is Sheacha Kiddushin. Sivloin are gifts that are kind of an engaged couple. They give to each other after the Kiddushin. Now remember, in those days, you had two stages to a wedding. You had the Kiddushin and then you had the Nisuin. It's a bit similar to our engagement in our marriages. You have the engagement, and then three, four, five, six months, whenever it is later, you actually have the chasna. And of course, nowadays, the engagement is not halakhically significant. She doesn't become a married woman at that point. It's a commitment to get married, and you know, maybe they're to know him, maybe they're not to know him, but assuming they're not to know him, then it's not really of any significance halakhically. If you break an engagement, okay, there's, uh, you know, you need to, uh, that, that's something to deal with. But uh, uh, that she's not, she hasn't changed her status as a married woman. And therefore, in days of old, the Kiddushin was a proper Kiddushin. The first half of what we do under the Chuppah today, where you say the Brachos, then he gives her the ring and says the words of Harit Makudeshesli, that she is Makudeshes now, and she's considered an Eishas Ish, and all the Halachas that go with that. And if they decide to put out at that point, she'll need to get then we do the Nisuin. So we try and break up the ceremony under the Chuppah by baking, uh, reading the Ksuba or the Rav Speaks or whatever it may be. But that's the Kiddushin in the Nisuin. So in the days of old, they would, get, they would get married, they would have the Kiddushin first, then she would go back to her home and prepare for the wedding in the same way that we prepare nowadays between the engagements and the marriage. And he would send gifts, Sivlonus. So therefore, people would look at these sivlonis. These are the gifts, the wedding gifts that are given after kiddushin. And therefore, we can assume that they have previously got married, and it's just that the witnesses are not here. Okay. Now, what about matonas uh, levyonim? So the Rama says, "Av matonas levyonim ein lochosh." Says the Mishnah ein lochosh. Does there have it because matonas levyonim are with money? The lekla mechish the sivlonis. And you, you, when you give gifts, you give uh, jewelry, you give flowers, but you don't give money. So therefore, we're not really worried about it. Vafidim noisin levyon machal. And even if you give food, you know, maybe you can buy. You know, the, 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 the husband can buy his, his the chasen can buy the kala, I don't know, uh, some food, a nice, uh, I don't know, some, some fruit or some, uh, some cake or whatever. Who derech stock, but when you're giving to the we're not worried about it because that's derech stock. For in the derech sivlonis, it's not really in the form of a gift. So when it comes to matonis levioni, we're not worried about it. Now, what exactly is the concern? So the truth is, the poets can say there are three possible concerns of why a man should not send mashlach monos to a woman. One concern is either that the gift itself might be deemed as Kesef Kiddushin, so he's giving her something of value, that's what marriage is. We are used to seeing a chasna, a chuppah, where the man, the chasna gives the kala a ring, but that's what the Mishnah says, one of them is Kesef, he's giving her something of value, that's what affects the Kinyan. So if he gives her a Shlach Monas, it doesn't actually have to be money, it can be of Shavah Kesef, something of monetary value, which is what we do, we give a ring, but if he wants to give a basket of, uh, of, of, of wine and, and of chocolates or whatever, that would count. So one concern is the gift might be deemed as Kesef Kiddushin. A second separate concern, similar but separate, is the gift might imply that the couple had previously had Kiddushin. That's what the Mishnah Buru is referring to. And the third concern is nothing to do with Kiddushin. But generally speaking, we want to minimize the interaction and the closeness between men and women. And that's really what the Orach HaShulchan says. If you look at paragraph 2-3, the Orach HaShulchan says, V'isha tishalach le'isha v'ish le'ish t'lein no'e li'es kiruv das b'in ish le'isha Because it's not appropriate there should be that closeness that a man should send his gift to a woman. And there's a separate concern, when she's an unmarried lady, that there might be a concern of Kiddushin. But primarily, says the Orach HaShulchan, the concern is Kiruv Das. We're trying to avoid that uh, closeness, that interaction. Now, according to this, according to the Orach HaShulchan, that the third reason is the closeness, and we're trying to minimize that interaction, then sending to a married woman is actually more of a problem. Because... 
the, the chassan sends a, sending to a kala is actually a nice thing to do. You may encourage the chassan to send some flowers before Shabbos to his kala to create that closeness. We actually encourage that. But to send, uh, but, but if to sending therefore to a married woman is going to be more problematic because of course you don't want to encourage that closeness. So uh, that, that would be an interesting enough kamina. Now if you turn over the sheet, there, there is a famous machlikas. Whenever you go to a shir about, on Purim about Shlach Monos, there's a famous, famous machlikas between the Trumas Hadeshin and the Monos Halevi. And there are, people can give a share on this and they can quote this machlikas and come up with, you know, literally 10, 15 nafkaminas between the two. What is the machlikas? The question is, what exactly is the purpose of Shlach Monos? So the Trumas Hadeshin says, it's to provide food for the Suda. So you're actually giving gifts of food and therefore it's, uh, it's to be used in the Suda. The Monas Halevi says, in a separate place, he says, it's, it's to create a sense of connection of Ava, of Reis, and Klal Yisrael. So there, there are lots and lots of nafkaminas. Says the, the Shailas and Shuvahs, Mishnah Halachas, you can add this to the list. How so? If you look at the top box in the next page, paragraph 3, according to the reason of the Trumas Deshen, i.e. to provide food for the Suda, so since women are also obligated in the Suda, according to the Trumas Adeshen, where the reason for Shlach is to provide food for the Suda, so then, great, the woman is also obligated in the Suda. She also needs to have food for her Suda. So therefore, it would be appropriate to send to a woman. But according to the, the Monas Levis, to create a sense of Ava and Reyes between people in Kladi Yisrael, then, uh, yeah, he says in the last line, of the Monas Levis, then it's appropriate the man sends to a man, a woman to a woman, because we're not trying to create a closeness between a man and another woman. So therefore, this would be an, another nafkamina, and he says, maybe yes, maybe no. Now, why doesn't this concern apply to Matonis Levyanim? Why does the Ramah say that a woman can give shlachmonis to a, sorry, a man can give shlachmonis to a woman? No problem. Not shlachmonis, sorry. That a, a man can give Matonis Levyanim uh, to, to a woman. Why is that not a concern? So there are really, there are four answers that emerges from all of this. The Morgan Avram, cited by the Mishnah Brewer above, is that no one's going to think it's Savlonus. Sivlonus, I mean. Well, in other words, like I said before, for Sivlonus, you give a bunch of roses, you give jewelry, you give something like that. But you don't give money. So therefore, that's not really a concern. The Shus Yaakov says, interestingly, we've got a concept generally of Shalot Tinel Deles Bifnei Lovin, which means we try to encourage people to give stock, and we want uh, the poor to receive, and therefore we're not concerned about this very unlikely chashash. So we're not really worried about it. The Orach HaShulchan says, yeah, I didn't read that bit, but the Orach HaShulchan says, Because when you're, when you're giving this, you know, it's not Kiruv Das. If you're giving Shlach Monos, that is to, to create a sense of achdus and closeness. But when you're giving Matanas Levyanim, it's not really Kiruv Hadas. You know, you're giving Nebuch, they need money. And the fourth uh, reason why that this concern doesn't really apply to Matonis Levyonim is an interesting Birki Yosef. The Birki Yosef says that there is a halach of kolapeshet yad noistimlo on Purim. That whoever stretches out their hand, any oni who stretches out his hands, noistimlo. Of course, they say al pidrush that it means tefillah as well. That your peshet yad, your daven on Purim, that noistimlo. You, you get response to your tefillahs. It's a day of tefillah. But either way, of course, the, 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 the main reason is kolapeshet yad is referring to an Oni and yet no similar, and therefore that applies to everybody. So when you, it's not bespoke to this particular woman. Mashenken Shlachmonas is is a specific. I'm giving to you and not to you. So therefore, it's very singled out. So therefore, the concern of Kirv Adas is specific to Shlachmonas because I'm going to give to you, and Mashenke Matonis Levyonim, you're going to give to everybody because Kalaposhet Yad No Similay. Anyone who stretches out their hands. You give. So for those four reasons, this concern is not really applicable, and therefore there's no problem for a man to give a woman matonis levionim. Now what about the other way around? What about a woman sending to a man? Because uh, what, what should the concern be? So the Shvus Yaakov gives three reasons. He says, number one, 
This is proof, really, that the primary concern is what the Orach HaShulchan says, i.e. Kirv Das. And it's not appropriate to create that connection between, between that woman and that man who's not, her, who's not his wife. So therefore, that would apply also if a woman is sending to a man. In other words, no, Shlachmonos. So Shlachmonos, for a woman to give Shlachmonos to a man, says the Shrus Yaakov, there are three concerns. Number one is that the main concern is Kirv Das. Of course, if a woman gives to a man, that's not Kesef Kedushin. Because the man has got to give the ring to the woman, the case of the to the woman. Now, the second reason that the Shrus Yaakov gives is that the minig is often to exchange lachmanas. That's what we do. Yeah, I remember as a kid that uh, when we were home, my mother, you know, had made lots of shlachmanas on our day. It was busy in the cars. You know, it was like a Purim, and um, and we get a knock on the door. We open the door. Someone comes in. You know, a kid has been sent out from their car. To deliver the shlachmonas, I take it from them, bring it in. Mummy, it was family, whatever. And she goes, "Oh boy, I haven't prepared for them." Uh, and then she, you know, she quickly looks around the table and she puts, uh, she takes one and she puts a sticker on, and because I run back and give it to them, and it turns out giving back the same one they've given us, right? So you've got to be a bit careful. But the minute is to exchange, you get, you give. That's how it goes. So therefore, the concern is that if a woman sends shlachmonas to a man, he will then reciprocate and give to her, and that's our concern. So that's the second reason he gives. Now the third reason is a very interesting one. It's a sugi in Kiddushin, uh, which I just did in school, we're learning Kiddushin in, in school at the moment. And that is Odom Choshev, which is a very unusual case where a woman can give a present to a man. And this man is a big Rosh Hashiva, right? Everyone saw clips this week of Tzvi Kushalevsky, the Briz, the most, <laughs> one of them. Uh, just remarkable, just, just remarkable. So, uh, you know, we were, we were in Poland. We were, asking, we were talking about Poland before. So it was on Sunday, the Bris. So on Sunday was the last day in Poland. So we were, we were in Krakow for Shabbos and we drove to Auschwitz. And that was the last day we drove to Auschwitz. Uh, me and one or two other Rebbers are watching this Bris on our phones as we're pulling into Auschwitz. And we're rooted to the phone. We're just watching this thing. And uh, okay, we, the boys, okay, we follow them you know, a few minutes later because we just want to finish off watching the, the, you know, the, the actual end of Bris. On the Monday, we go back to school and we have a debrief. We have a whole session in school, a post Poland debrief, we call it. So we sit around, kind of a lot of kids, and we go around and everyone says the highlight of their trip. And one kid said the highlight of their trip was watching the bris with Rabbi X, Y, and Z in the coach just before about. That was his highlight of his Poland trip. <laughs> so, anyway, so imagine you give, someone like that, you give an Adam Choshev a gift. Who gets more Hana? So, the, if a woman gives a gift, an Adam Choshev says the Gemara, if he turns around to her and says, I marry you with the Hana that you received that I'm accepting your gift, that works. So therefore, the concern may be that if a woman gives to an Adam Chashuv, it could work. That he's saying, I'm marrying you because you get more Hana that I've received your gift. So there is that as well. Okay, so there's three concerns when it comes to a woman sending to a man. Now, are there any exceptions? The Ramal says that a man should send to a man, a woman should send to a woman. Are there any exceptions? Well, yes. Number one, sending to a whole family is no problem. So you want to give to family Goldberg, that's not a concern that, 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 the, that the sender is giving to the family, because it's the whole family. That's not a problem. The second concern is um, um, that uh, so yeah, if, if there's no other Jews in town, if there's just one man and just one woman in town, there's not a concern. Why is that? Because there's no concern of Kiddushim, yeah, because there's no Edim. Because if there's only him and her in the whole town, there's no likelihood of, of Kiddushim because where are your Edim? And, um, and also the, the Ramos says the minute that uh, it's, the, wouldn't say to discard the minute for this concern. Okay, and also if you don't give it in front of Edim, it's not really a problem. It's only a problem if there's a Chashash of Kiddushim for that reason. Now, La Halacha, even though this is not really a major concern, um, we do, the Ramah does say it, and therefore, of course, we're going to, you know, Kali Yisrael, Yotzim B'yad Ramah, we say. That uh, when Kali Yisrael came out of Mitzrayim, they came out B'yad Ramah, with an outstretched hand. But the Chassam Sofer, the Rav Yosef, often say that the, the, the Ashkenazim, they, they follow, they follow uh, the Ramah all the way. And therefore, Kali Yisrael, Yotzim B'yad Ramah. We always listen to what the Ramah says, and therefore, of course, we want to comply with the ruling of the Ramah. The Shmuel Kamenetsky says that the main concern is really like the Orach HaShulchan says, and therefore that is, is, is that of Kirov Das, and it's not really a concern of Kiddushin, and therefore the best thing is just don't give in front of Edim, um, but it's best to comply, of course, with the Ramah. So therefore the Minig is that uh, indeed a man gives to a man, a woman gives to a woman, but if you give to a whole family, you give to a couple or whatever, then that's not really a concern at all. Okay, let's say that.